We will begin the press conference by Foreign Minister Hayashi. Uh, the floor is yours, Minister. Thank you very much. From the 3rd of November to the 4th, I will be attending the second Japan-Germany Foreign and Defense Ministers meeting, the 2 plus 2, and the G7 Foreign Ministers meeting. And therefore, I plan to be visiting Minister of Germany for those meetings. This Japan Germany 2 plus 2 is going to be the first 2 plus 2 on face to face be basis. We will be discussing the security and defense cooperation between Japan and Germany. We will be confirming our solidarity between the two countries in response to Russia's aggression of Ukraine. And we'll be discussing regional issues, including East Asia and response to North Korea over nuclear, missile, and abduction issues. And the G7 foreign ministers meeting will be the 10th G7 foreign ministers meeting this year, including the virtual meetings, where we will be discussing Ukraine in the Pacific and other regional situations, as well as the urgent matters of the international community. I look forward to engaging in candid exchange of views with my G7 counterparts. First, Further, I will take advantage of this opportunity to have individual meetings with foreign ministers of various countries in order to deepen our collaboration. Thank you very much. Those of you who have questions, please raise your hand. When appointed, proceed to the microphone, identify your name and affiliation, and proceed to your question. NHK Iwasawa-san. Thank you, Iwasawa NHK, related to G7 uh, meeting. At the Foreign Ministers' uh, Conference uh, so far, you have repeatedly confirmed that you will collaborate with regard to Ukraine, uh, but Russia's aggression of Ukraine is becoming extended. And this year, the G7 Foreign Ministers' meeting is the 10th time. What is the effect and the meaning with regard to Ukraine? As you just uh, mentioned, the collaboration of the G7 that shares fundamental values and principles is becoming increasingly important as the international affairs become increasingly uncertain. And already with regard to Ukraine, the G7 foreign minister has been held nine times. And as the only member of G7, Japan has contributed to policy coordination, external communication by the G7. As for this meeting, this has already been planned from the beginning of this year, and it is a two-day program. Japan wishes to talk not only about Ukraine, but also the challenges in the Indo-Pacific region and other extensive measures. We wish to engage in frank discussion with G7 members and wish to once again reinforce our collaboration with the G7. Azari San Apan Orient News. Azari Pan Orient News. Japan, I just say on the Ukrainian issue. Does Japan believe in diplomacy to settle the war in Ukraine? rather than supporting Ukraine to fight back Russia and what seems to be a very long destructive war. Thank you. Russia's aggression of Ukraine is an outrage that shakes the very foundation of international order that the international community has for over the years tried to establish through diligent effort and much sacrifice. Unilateral attempt to change status quo is intolerable. President Putin has repeatedly tried to justify Russia's aggression of Ukraine and has shown no signs to compromise and change its hardline position. We have deep concerns over the threat of nuclear weapons by Russia. The threat of nuclear weapons, let alone their use, must never be tolerated. Under such circumstances, in order to have Russia seize its aggression at the earliest possible timing and to draw the pathway towards dialogue, we need to work in solidarity with the international community, including the G7, and maintain strong sanctions against Russia and support towards Ukraine. Last evening, with regard to Japan's uh, uh, proposal on uh, the elimination of uh, uh, nuclear uh, 
uh, weapons and the draft resolution. Uh, this has been supported by 139 countries at the first committee of the UN General Assembly. Uh, for the first time, there is a reference to the TPNW uh, Treaty. Uh, what is the message included in by the government of Japan, and what do, do you think you will, how will you deal with the TPNW treaty? On the 31st of uh, October, as you have mentioned, the draft resolution has been supported and adopted by 139 countries, including the United States, UK, and France. The division of the International Committee related to nuclear disarmament is becoming deeper, and therefore it is very meaningful uh, that uh, this uh, draft has been adopted by countries with different positions, including nuclear weapon states of US, UK, and France, that they have been supported. Our uh, position related to TPNW treaty has not changed at all. However, the fact that uh, this draft resolution has uh, been supported extensively uh, by countries in different positions and in order to raise the momentum for this armament, we have uh, followed up and referred to uh, the sentences in the draft of the final uh, outcome document of the August NPT review conference and have noted the facts related to the treaty uh, through this uh, Resolu draft resolution and keeping in mind the G7 Hiroshima summit next year in order to raise the momentum further of the international community to realize a world without nuclear weapons, we will patiently advance a realistic and practical efforts in this regard. Araya-san of Hokkaido newspaper. Newspaper. I have a question on Northern Territories. President Zelensky of Ukraine last month indicated that he supports the sovereignty of Japan over the Northern Territories and passed a resolution at the Ukraine Parliament. Is there a view in the Japanese government to put this at the International Forum to resolve the territorial issue? On October the 7th, the Ukraine Supreme Council adopted a resolution supporting Japan's position over the Northern Territories and announcements was made on the executive order by Ukraine. It is very significant that we have been granted understanding and support from many countries, including Ukraine, over Japan's position. Russia's Ukraine uh, aggression of Ukraine has put the Japan-Russia relations into a very harsh situation, but our position remains unchanged to co negotiate with Russia to solve the territory issue and ex uh, conclude a peace treaty. Miyahara-san, Mainichi Shinbun newspaper. Miyahara, Mainichi Shinbun newspaper. Uh, this is regard to uh, the cessation of uh, the Black Sea grain export initiative by Russia. On the 20th of October, the government of Russia stated that uh, they have been attacked uh, by terrorism and have uh, uh, announced that they will stop uh, the participation. Ukraine uh, denies, uh, and uh, this is criticized as unilateral. Uh, a cause of a food crisis, or it will cause a grain price hike. There is some move of resumption. What is the response, and how do you observe the situation? The Black Sea Grain Export Initiative that enables the export of Ukraine agricultural produce from the port of Black Sea. Russia has unilaterally announced that they will cease the participation as Russia's aggression of Ukraine is the very reason causing this global food security crisis, this is extremely regrettable. We are carefully monitoring uh, the impact of uh, Russia's uh, announcement onto the food supply across the world. In particular, uh, we are deeply concerned whether there would be any impact onto the vulnerable uh, population, including the spread of famine in developing economies. According to the United Nations, uh, grain export by Russia under this Black Sea Grain Export Initiative has not stopped entirely. However, uh, going forward, if uh, the grain export from Black Sea completely stops and uh, uh, due to food price hike uh, and then danger food security across the world, in particular those of the most vulnerable people in developing economies. That negative impact is not acceptable. The government of Japan will work together with the International Committee, including the G7, and we strongly demand that Russia 
continue the cooperation of the grain export framework based on other four-party agreement. U.S. Assam of NHK. U.S. of NHK. I have the question on Kampoku, uh, the uh, Korean Seoul crush accident. It was confirmed that two Japanese citizens have uh, passed away. What is the response uh, from you and from the government, and how do you intend to respond to the family members? The crush that was caused in Seoul on the eve of the 29th last month led to the passing of two Japanese citizens. I extend my deepest condolences and my sympathy goes to the family members. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs established in this office uh, response headquarters headed by the Director General of the Councilor Affairs Bureau and in ROK uh, response headquarters headed by Ambassador Aiboshi in order to collect information and to provide assistance to the family members of those who were sacrificed to respond to the injuries and damage caused to Japanese citizens. We stand together with the families and we will provide as much support as possible. We have no other information than the two members who passed away. Uh, the last question, Mr. Zahari. Thank you again. Khaldun Atsari, Power News. I would like to ask about the embassies of Afghanistan and Syria. What is Japan's, uh, what is the status of uh, the Afghanistan embassy and ambassador in Japan? And uh, is Japan planning to reopen its uh, embassy in Syria anytime soon? Thank mm. you. Regarding uh, the Afghanistan embassy in uh, Tokyo and about the ambassador to uh, Tokyo, uh, currently there has been no specific communication from Afghanistan. I believe that there is no change in the status. With regard to the Japanese embassy in uh, Syria at the moment, it is temporarily closed and it has been transferred to the neighboring country uh, Beirut, Lebanon. At the moment, there is no plan to resume. This is the end of the press conference. Thank you.